Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. I uh, thought I would do uh, another primer video. I'm going to try and get at least get a, at least one video done every week so that uh, we kind of uh, can, can get you guys all on the same page in terms of understanding what these maps look like. And uh, tonight, what I thought I'd do is explain Really, what are we looking at here? You see a bunch of lines. Uh, you see some of them closed into circles. You see these, you know, ridges that I refer to uh, pointing northward. We look at different levels of the atmosphere, and uh, even though we live here on the surface, obviously, uh, we do a lot of our forecasting in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And one level we look at is the 500 millibar level. Now, what is that? Okay. So, first off, millibar is a measure of pressure. And uh, it's a universal measure, so all, everybody uses it. This way, we're all on the same page, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what country, uh, what model you're looking at, be it the, uh, the uh, UK MET model, which is the British model, or the European model, we all use um, millibars. Now, um, if you want to see a translation to what millibars are to inches, you can Google it. And uh, you can just put in, you know, the inches of the millibars and you'll see what it comes out to. So basically what these maps are, are, are road maps of the atmosphere. So to construct these road maps, uh, we uh, need to uh, make a couple of assumptions. First off, the bottom of the atmosphere where we are is considered the thousand millibar level. And the top of the atmosphere, which is about uh, 30 miles up, is considered zero millibars. So uh, 500 millibars is the middle part, which roughly translates to 18,000 feet. In some places, it's lower. In some places, it's a little bit higher, but um, it roughly translates to 18,000 feet. And we do uh, adjustments uh, for uh, sea level in order to make these maps all come out uh, the same so that we're looking at something that is uniform and not disjointed for example you know if we were look at a, a, a literal surface map it's not going to match up to a city like Denver that's 5,000 feet up so in order to co connect the dots uh, we're going to adjust the surface pressure to sea level and that's what uh, you the readings that you get uh, on on your barometers when you have the barometric pressure on a, on a TV weathercast uh, when the weather service gives you the pressure in inches for your particular location, it's adjusted for sea level. And we'll show you the, the surface maps in just a second. Uh, these are the upper air maps. Now, what the map is, this is a 500 millibar level. This is a, the most important level of the atmosphere that we look at as uh, meteorologists in trying to create our forecast. It gives us a very good flavor for what's going on in the high levels of the atmosphere and then we can see how it translates in terms of what happens down at the surface. Now, the numbers that you see, 582, 579, 576, okay, these are numbers in meters. Now, pressure decreases with height, and temperature is also going to impact uh, pressure, the density of a cold air mass or the lack of density in a warm air mass. So, what these maps tell us is these numbers we add a zero to the end of this okay so 5790 90 meters what that means is that's how high in the atmosphere we have to go in order to ch achieve a, a pressure of 500 millibars so everywhere in this world here the pressure is 500 millibars we look at how high we go in the atmosphere to get to that pressure. Now, as we go into colder and colder air, those heights tend to decrease. 576 or 5,760, it's 30 meters lower. 5,730, 5,700, and so on and so on and so on until we get up here on this particular map we have a height of 500, 546, which means in Western Canada, we have to go up to, in this area, we'll have to go up to 5,460 meters in order to get a pressure of 500 millibars. In other words, we, have to, we don't have to go as high as we do here. 
5,790 meters, where the air is warmer, okay? So the warmer air, uh, we have to go to a higher height in order to achieve that 500 millibar pressure. When we connect all the dots, we can get a sense of the flow of the wind on the upper atmosphere, like that, okay? And then where you see the dips, you've got your troughs. Where you see the rises like this, you have your ridges. Now, sometimes, as in the case out here in the Pacific, we have a completely closed upper level low. The blue is below average heights, okay? So it's telling you that in this area, the heights... The 500 millibar heights are lower than what they normally should be. The darker the blue, the colder the air, the greater the anomaly. And you can see the anomaly here, how much below average it is or how much above average it is. So when we have an area of above average heights, like you do up in Canada, for example, that's telling us that there is warm air, uh, warm, warmer than normal air that's up in Western Canada. And when we look at, um, when we talk about uh, patterns overall, when we come out, for example, when we had blocking patterns, you'll see that the signature is that you will have above normal heights uh, of all across the polar regions and that the jet stream winds up getting displaced further and further south, okay? And the opposite is true in um, some cases. Uh, you'll see colder than normal heights up in Canada. And that would mean that the cold air is pulled up further north and not displaced as far south. So, you know, you want to have an equal view of the atmosphere wherever you happen to be. Now, I'm going to show you, we'll go to the uh, a closer version here. Now we have a surface map, okay? These are all isobars. They're lines of equal pressure, and you see them here. So when we close those isobars off, we have low pressure, like we have in this particular map southeast of New England. Then we have higher pressures here. So it's reflecting the surface. It would say that you know, anywhere along these, this line, for example, this is the 1,014 millibar uh, pressure at the surface, okay? And you can see... When you connect the dots, of it's just basically saying that all along this line, you're going to have a pressure of 1,014 millibars. And remember that winds blow clockwise around highs, counterclockwise around lows. Now, notice, by the way, here is your um, surface map, okay, which is a kind of a busy map. There's a lot going on in terms of all these lows and highs. Um, all over the place, all right? Now, when we switch over to the upper air map, and I'm going to go to some different levels here. Um, let's go to 850 millibars, just as an example. You'll notice that there's less in terms of the highs and the lows. The atmosphere becomes a smoother place. There is less friction with land. Um, you have a, more, a little bit more uniformity in a sense um, as you go higher up in the atmosphere. So you, you start to see um, fewer and fewer uh, H's, let's call them H's and L's. And we'll jump up to the 700 millibar level. And you'll notice that 700 millibars, um, even less, you've got, you know, there's, there's a complex low here in the east. You've got a low that's back out coming into California, and you've got that ridge in the middle. And then we'll go even higher, and you'll see at the 500 millibar level, again, the look becomes broader and broader as we go up. We can go up to 300 millibars. Well, this is not the, the best map to look at. Let's see. Let's try this one. Even that one, because that's showing other things that we really don't um, use too much. But let's see with 250 millibars. Now, this is going way up in, <clears throat> in the atmosphere. The 200, uh, and this is sort of overanalyzed, so these are not really the best examples of it. But I, I think you get the general idea here 
of um, you know what we're seeing, what we're, what we're looking at. And one of the things that I'll um, you, you know leave you with is the fact that we've got so many different levels to look at, so many different things that are going on uh, in any kind of weather forecast situation that um, it really requires you know a lot of uh, let's call it intense preparation. Uh, to look at all of this stuff and you can, I think you can start to grasp at least an appreciation for the fact that it isn't just a simple matter of looking at what's going on uh, at one particular level of the atmosphere that we have to really look up at different levels by the way just so you know the green here is precipitation in rain now on some of the maps like the uh, NAM model map for example um, we have the actual reflection of what the model thinks the radar echoes are going to look like. Whereas on the GFS model, and I usually try to point out the differences when I'm using them, this is actually showing measurable rainfall. And you can see the scale, um, you know, off to the side um, here. So, um, you know, the, all these, all these um, model, all, all these models are showing, you know, they show different things, uh, and it's important that you take a look at, at at read you know your labels at the top, your legends at the side. It is a lot to to absorb, and I will just say that that you know if you're new to this, you keep watching long enough, you start to see a certain degree of repetition uh, with regards to how weather works, and you'll have little light bulbs that will go off from time to time in your head, and suddenly something that you don't quite understand um, will just click okay so um let's uh, leave it there and um we'll uh, come back to another one uh soon and little by little we'll piece together um what exactly is uh, going on in the upper atmosphere and you can uh, one day maybe sit down and become your own uh, you know forecaster and try and figure out how things are and i would encourage you by the way to do that uh, even now um, look at the maps, get familiar with them. You may not understand what they all mean. Some of them we never mean it, may never even look at or use. Uh, you know, from a practical standpoint on a day to day, there's a lot of these maps that I just don't look at because they're not really that important. Uh, they may only be important in certain situations. So we may look at uh, different levels uh, other than the ones I've showed you um, for, um, say, hurricanes or um, uh, possibly for snowstorms we might look at a couple of different things that we're not we don't normally look at for day-to-day -day weather so try to get familiar tropicaltidbits.com is a wonderful website to do this at because uh, he has everything on one page including hurricane models that exist and when we get into hurricane season i'll be displaying um, all these different hurricane models and you'll be uh, we'll be taking a look to see uh, just exactly uh, what they're showing. Plus, there's all sorts of tools that he has. Uh, there's a link for uh, aircraft recon, uh, a link for current storms that are existing. This is a great um, uh, link here. If you go on tropicaltidbits.com and go to current storms, uh, he, uh, by he, uh, Levi Cowan, who runs this, who, who, who owns this page and has done an absolutely fantastic job with it uh, he puts all the tropical storms and hurricanes that are going on in the world all on one page so if you're interested in that this is a great uh, asset and I would uh, definitely uh, bookmark it and you're gonna find uh, it quite handy during tropical storm season uh, it even shows you know he even puts up what we see you know those spaghetti plots that have all the different um, uh, all the all the different models and what their forecast tracks are. Uh, in this particular instance, we're looking at um, a system that's uh, out at 13.1 south and 179.9 west. Okay, so that is actually just west of of just about. Boy, that is way south. <laughs> um, that's in the southern hemisphere. And it's near the international date line. So this is something that might be headed eventually for um, Australia um, because they uh, are coming to the end of their tropical storm season as they go into their winter in the southern hemisphere and we go 
into our summer. So use this site, tropicaltidbits.com. I hope you got something uh, good out of all of this. Uh, I tr I'm trying to be clear. You know, a lot of this stuff is so technical, it's, it's not all, often easy to explain. But uh, little by little, we're going to put this all together for you. Uh, in the meantime, uh, enjoy your day, and uh, we will uh, have another Primer video up very soon.